Questions 23 to 26 in the ASA blue paper. Question 23. So in question 23, we're essentially crossing a Japanese starry flounder, uh, which are homozygous for the left eye allele LL. So this is the dominant allele. And we're crossing them with the West Coast fish, um, a specifically a right-eyed West Coast fish. Um, but all West Coast fish from hypothesis one have a neutral allule, which is this, and they are homozygous for that allule. And that allule can be either of right or left eye. So if we cross these parents, um, we will get um, a, the genotype of the offspring and that you will all universally have the same um, genotype, and that is this. They will have the heterozygous genotype of big L, little L, and therefore, since the big L is dominant, all offspring will have the left-sided phenotype. So we, therefore, the only correct answer is C. So question 24, as according to hypothesis three, we're crossing uh, parents with the following alleles as described here. And we're undergoing a monohybrid cross and we're trying to figure out what the proportions of the offspring are going to be. So if you're familiar with the monohybrid cross, we will get the following genotypes in the offspring. And it's just a simple case of matching that up with each of the descriptions in hypothesis three. So this is a neutral allele, left allele individual. Since left is dominant, this um, each of these individuals will be left-sided. Similarly, these individuals have a dominant left allele, so therefore they will be left-sided. These individuals are neutral allele, right allele um, individuals, and therefore, as according to hypothesis three, um, since the right allele is dominant to the neutral allele, these will be right-sided individuals. Um, as for these ones, these are neutral neutral individuals. So um, as according to hypothesis three, they will be 50-50 left and right. How do we determine the proportions of each of these phenotypes? Well, we know that each of these genotypes occupies one quarter of the offspring's proportions. So therefore, we can say that one quarter will have this genotype and therefore will be left. One quarter will, of these will be left. <clears throat> one quarter will be right due to this genotype. And one eighth will be left. And one eighth will be right due to this genotype. So as we know, this genotype occupies one quarter of the whole proportion of offspring and half of them will be left so and half of them will be right. So therefore one eighth will be left and therefore one eighth will be right. So if you sort of just add up all of this, you get five eighths are left sided and um, three eighths are right sided. And this most closely corresponds to an answer of B because one eighth is equivalent to 12.5%. Um, and three eighths is therefore about, uh, is therefore three, 37.5%, which means that uh, if 40% were right eyed, well, that would be closest to three eighths and therefore C is the correct answer. Question 25. Question 25 is a little bit different from the others because in hypothesis two, uh, for the West Coast parent, we're only given the alleles and not the exact genotype of that parent. Whilst in previous questions, we've been given the exact genotypes for each parent. So how do we sort of predict what the offspring will look like if we don't even know what the genotype is for one of the parents? Well, luckily we, uh, there is the Hardy-Weinberg principle that can help us out. And namely, the Hardy-Weinberg principle allows us to figure out the genotype frequencies if only given the allele frequencies. So the frequency of an allele is the percentage that the allele takes up in a population. 
Um, say we have two alleles, big A and little a, and that each allele has certain frequencies, P and Q respectively. According to Hardy Weinberg, the genotypes have the following frequencies. So big A, big A will have a uh, will have a frequency of P squared, whilst um, big A, little a will have a frequency of 2PQ, little a, little a will have a frequency of Q squared. So if you're sort of unfamiliar with this rule, I'd suggest looking it up. But that's sort of the basic summary. The Hardy-Weinberg principle allows us to figure out the genotype frequencies if only given the allele frequencies. So using this information, we can answer the question. So a West Coast uh, flounder is crossed with a Japanese-style flounder. Um, so according to hypothesis two, the genotypes for the uh, the possible genotypes for the West Coast flounder is LL, LR, and RR. Whilst for the Japanese starry flounder, it is just LL. So we know from Hardy Weinberg that um, the respective frequencies for each of these um, genotypes will be like so. So we know that the um, L and the R frequencies, uh, so L and the R alleles have the same frequency. That is, they have the half frequency. 0.5 frequency. So what we get therefore is the LL um, genotype will have a frequency of half squared as according to Hardy Weinberg. Um, LR will have a uh, will have a frequency of two times half times half like so and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So what we get if we just um, sort of figure that out uh, in a population of West Coast fish, a quarter of them will be LLs. A half of them will be LRs, and one quarter of them will be RRs. So let's use this information to answer the question. So what we'll get is uh, when we cross a West Coast flounder with a Japanese starry flounder, um, one quarter of the time we'll be crossing the Japanese starry flounder with a LL West Coast flounder. So. Um, since a LL cross with, crossing with a LL will always result in LL children, we can say that one quarter of all children will have the LL genotype. The LR um, genotype might be a little bit more, more hard to conceptualize. So if we cross, um, so 50% of the time we're going to be crossing a um, LR West Coast Flander with a LL. So this, uh, this combination represents 50% of all matings. Um, this mating has a 50% ch chance of making LR children and a 50% ch chance of making LL children. So therefore, 25% of all offspring will be LR or LL. So um, this is represented here where we've got one quarter of the offspring being LL and one quarter of the offspring being LR. So um, these two respective groups are responsible, uh, uh, are produced, sorry, by the mating of a LR with a LL. Um, and lastly, if we, 25% of the matings will involve a RR crossing with a LL, um, and that always produces an LR, LR children. Um, so therefore we can say that one quarter of all offspring will have the LR. Uh, genotype. So what we get if we collect all of the genotypes is we get one half being LL and one half being LR. So as according to hypothesis two, this means that three quarters will be left-sided whilst one quarter will be right-sided. <clears throat> and that corresponds with an answer of A. So question 26 is sort of one of those weird questions where basically you have to try and prove that each of these hypotheses is correct. And if you can, if you can find any possible combination within each of these hypotheses in which all the children have a 50-50 chance of being either right or left-sided, well, then you can rule that hypothesis in. So if you sort of go through each of these um, combinations, uh, such as in hypothesis one, the LL, neutral uh, allele being combined with the LL neutral allele for the West Coast flounder. Well, you'll find that they always result in um, a 50-50 chance of being either left or right sided for their offspring. So you can sort of confidently say that each of these hypotheses uh, succeed as in they are all correct. 
So D is the only correct answer that none of them um, are kind of ruled out by the information in 26. How would you answer this in the exam? Well, it's sort of, to my knowledge, it's sort of one of those questions where it's just trial and error. You sort of uh, just throw together genotypes. Uh, I guess there are certain combination of genotypes which are more likely to result in a 50-50 split. And basically you've got to try and work out whether one, there is a possible combination in which all the offspring have a 50-50 split, split of being right and left-sided. And that two, um, there's no restrictions on that allele being present in each of the respective geographic locations. For example, in hypothesis one, all of the um, West Coast fish, they all have the same genotype and that is the LL neutral allele. So you can't sort of say that the West Coast fish is going to have a bigger, bigger allele in the sort of combination that you're trying out. But basically, yeah, if you sort of go through each of these combinations, you'll find that they all are possible within each hypothesis and therefore um, none are ruled out.